breathe. Can you hear it? Welcome to Relay. <laughs> All right. That's Hello. Complicated. Uh, first, so I when apologize. You press the stop streaming button. It stops streaming. Well, see, the funny thing is, I went to go type something, and when I and I was typing and not looking, cause and and I hit space, and then realized that like when I had alt tabbed over to the window, it hadn't defaulted to the send message. It had defaulted to the end stream button. So when I hit space, it ended the stream. On the plus side, uh, Citizen Shenanigans won't have to leave his comment saying when the stream starts on YouTube. Thank, <laughs> thank you, by the way, for doing that. It's true. Though there will be two streams, I suppose. Um, I'll Darj, log in and delete the shit one. Darj, uh, I am sorry because I'm Canadian. And we are sorry for everything, including things that have nothing to do with us. Um, That's usually how it goes, yep. We say sorry as a comma. It's true. <laughs> sorry, eh? I'm British. Oh, I can't say that word. Never mind. <laughs> you can't. Uh, hey, Tip. Hey, Darsh. Hey, Arid. Uh, Surprise. Thank you, everybody. To the word I can't say. Just change one of the vowels, given the apostrophe. You're desperately trying to make a new word from that, aren't you? And I've made it pretty hard. Yeah, I'm not. No, I'm. I'm. I'm gonna try and erase <gasps> that from my wait, brain. Wait, wait, Darj, excuse <laughs> me. Is that even possible? Wait a second. I didn't think that a sober captain's table was allowed. What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> Are you drinking well, I mean, milk. Milk is pretty good. Is this a dare? Though. So, I will say, <laughs> I am considered to be very strange over on this side of the pond because I really like Ovaltine. I've never had Ovaltine. I find it delicious. I love making milk with Ovaltine. What is what is Ovaltine? I've heard the Gross. name before, but I've never had it. It's it's like a barley version of um, chocolate milk, but it's not chocolate. It's like tastes like a healthy chocolate drink so it's, it's delicious Ooh. it's so good diarrhea I, with lumps in it a glass makes, i hate chocolate milk i love ovaltine i actually wish you know how you can get those like two liter bottle like <laughs> store made chocolate milks <laughs> i would buy <laughs> <laughs> uh chocolate milk is incredible eh. i Ovaltine's I better. Drink it, I don't milk. drink it as much as I used to, but I don't, okay. I don't hate it, but like if you get wow. if if you get store bought well, chocolate thing is, milk, the thing is with David, if he slightly dislikes something, oh yeah, I either love or hate. I have no. Yeah, I have a very yeah, very if, narrow if band. If he slightly dislikes something, it's a hate. It's like yeah. it's terrible. If I have chocolate milk, like the store bought chocolate milk. I need mm -hmm. to mix it half and half with normal milk because it's too strong for me. It's too sweet. Too chocolatey. And, All right, and so should I order honest, Ovaltine? I think you no, should buy some Ovaltine. Try it. it. I love it. Don't fucking do it. Don't <laughs> fucking do it. There's um, a very similar kind of drink, but it's malt. So I suppose it's not, but, you know, same sort of thing in the UK. It's called Horlicks. Horlex? Why do you have the weirdest names for stuff? <laughs> <laughs> it's um, grim. It's absolutely grim. It they tastes like don't you're licking have... a whore. That, maybe that's where wow. the name came from. Um, they don't have a non-sweet version here in uh, the Canadas, so, you know, I survive. I also water down like like if you buy like orange juice or cranberry juice at the store, I water that down. I water down my juice. Wow. I know people who do that. That's fair. Oh, it's not fair. It's like you just what we pull had your to back. do when we were. Yes. 
nodding my head. <laughs> Shiver. That sounds about right. Uh, you can't are have, you, are, you, can't are you have okay? the brain and the spine at the same time. That's not fair. Mm -hmm. All right. Welcome to the relay station. Um, oh, too bad. <laughs> um, first off, how's 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 uh, everyone doing this week? Uh, everyone in chat, how are you? How's the week treating you? Is everyone uh, is everyone amped for Starfield? It's like three weeks away. I don't give two shits about Starfield right now. <laughs> who's uh, who's <laughs> playing Baldur's Gate? It's going to be like Star Trek 6, you know? It's like, oh, Captain, we need to hit the warp button. But I'm too fat to reach the button. <laughs> Captain's Law, I've been complaining about the chair. I feel a slight thump in it. But nobody listens. Oh, well. Star Trek geriatrics. I'm really excited to watch uh, season two of, of Strange New Worlds. <gasps> but unfortunately, um, Pass picked a rewatch, a, a rewatch of the entire Witcher series, season one, season two, so that we can rewatch, so that we can watch season three after having, you know, rewatched the previous seasons. So that's, uh, so now you That's... have to wait like six months to watch Strange New Worlds? No, the season three is out. Of Witcher. Oh, you've already rewatched season one and two of The Witcher. Yeah, we, we, so, okay. we just like today finished our rewatch of season two and uh... now we're going to start on season three. I do like I your would... retaliation, Darge. I 100% I agree with that. I would do it started watching Strange New Worlds for season two. I was watching it, I was thinking, this isn't how it ended. This is very familiar. Oh, I'm watching season one. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Were you that upset about it? Uh, no, it was actually really good. <laughs> to be exactly honest with you, it was still really good. Like, I rewatched oh, all I, of season one before I started season two. I, I, you know, as I'm sure there are quite a few of us apart from Eris, um, who are big Star Trek fans, it still gives you that thrill of, oh my god, this is a real Star Trek series. They didn't steal this story. Excuse no, me, they, I uh... am a Star Trek fan. I love Next Gen, and I really liked Voyager, and I liked Enterprise. Um, You're a Star Trek fan, absolutely. I just didn't like Deep Space Nine. You just have Dicks, a deep disagreement Dicks, with me on, my, and... on one of my favorite series. <laughs> oh, I like didn't I didn't like District Nine, District was... Nine or whatever it was called. Yeah, District Nine. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, the the film in South Africa called uh, Deep Space Nine. Deep Space Nine. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Agent One Two Three. Those prawns. Agent One Two One Three is now banned from our chat. <laughs> Voyager was absolutely fucking terrible. Voyager was... Voyager's bipolar. It's either great or awful. No, Voyager... Bad. The problem is that Voyager, as much as you say it's mostly bad, it has some of the best episodes of any Star Trek. It does. It has I some amazing episodes. I think it, it has does. some great episodes, but not some of the best. But it was. I liked it. There's a there's a few there's a few TNG episodes that are pretty pretty hard to even approach. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. But T um, TNG, if it wasn't for TNG, we have nothing now. It's true. But Strange New Worlds is the the beauty of it and why it's so awesome is that they are just going back to traditional Star Trek. It's mm. and they're except mm. they're adding a little bit of a series like the um. um They've added, they've added Blair character Kitt? development to yeah. classic mm. monster of the week, right? Like they yep. they're doing totally. they're doing a monster it's... of the week with a unified uh, like growth of the characters throughout the season, which is not something that's done really well normally, and they're doing it amazingly. They're doing and a really good job. Yeah. The fact that it, they are now in this position where it's going to be on streaming service here. 
it means they can actually do that. Whereas before, when it was TNG and it was just network, networks don't necessarily air shows in order. So yep. the very mm-hmm. few bits of character development you got in TNG, you know, they were there, but yeah, it would have. Sad. It just wasn't. It wasn't. It didn't flow like like a like a more more serial series. Mm. You'd you'd mm. have like. Mm. Exactly, Dodge. End, exactly. end season things that that could change things, but you know you could only do you could only change things you know once or twice in a season of you know the twenty whatever episodes because you I mean, don't know if people watched them or skipped well, like it was just yeah they couldn't do major changes. Let's look yeah. at uh, Unification parts one and two. They could never have destroyed the Romulan Empire in TNG. Uh, they could certainly threaten it, but you could have a movie destroy Romulus and then a series pick up 15, 20 years later where it's like, oh, the whole thing's gone. Yeah. But the other thing is, like, the there, there's, there's good and bad, because yes, we get a lot more detailed and better episodes and this this you know plot line throughout but we've got what eight ten episodes in a season whereas you used to get 20 30 episodes right yeah it's a very different well it's that's all about about production quality right like that's um Mm -hmm. it it's harder for the right the writers have to work a lot harder and the effects are way better like it's everything's more intense so, I'm, yeah. I'm happy it's they, good they yeah, even but... had fans but i know i i'm missing the right in 26 episodes a season <laughs> they they used to have fans write in with ideas for episodes during tng mm-hmm. and uh not many of them got made but if, you know some of them did some of them got adapted and things who'd have thunk most gene roddenberry's ideas were thrown out they were terrible they were terrible Season one is a really good episode of DS9 that was fan written. Oh yeah, yep. Which one was it? It's um the one um it's an O'Brien episode and it's where he gets thrown into the future a few hours and sees the station explode. That is a good. And then one. he has to like go back and figure out how to stop it from happening. It Anything does, with O'Brien exactly is good. The same comic strip. Oh, I, I love O'Brien. He's amazing. I want just an O'Brien series. There's that would be a comic a... strip where it's just Chief O'Brien on the transporter for Enterprise D, and nobody likes him. <laughs> That's the whole premise of the whole series, <laughs> and it's horribly tragic and great. Oh, not even his wife? Jeez. He's That's not right. married in TNG. Oh, oh yeah, he is. No, they get married remember? during TNG. Yeah, they get married during TNG. Yeah, um, yeah. G- remember, uh, Worf has to deliver uh, <laughs> her baby. Keiko. No, Keiko's <laughs> the wife. Yeah, Molly is the child. Molly, yes. It's a that's a, such a great moment when Worf has to try and deliver a baby. Do you remember that one in TNG where the whole crew is memory right wiped? Data's in ten forward. This super advanced positronic based network AI wakes up and he's like, I must be the bartender. I'm behind the bar. Okay. (laughs) Makes sense to me. I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) Look, I think they sometimes forgot that Data was a robot. Uh, Or they just didn't. They were very inconsistent. They just didn't really understand exactly how. Yeah, yeah, totally. (laughs) If you watch season one and possibly bits of season two, he's using contractions, and then later on they make it a big thing that he can't use contractions, only law can, and it's like, but wait. <laughs> Maybe it was lore all along. Um, There's the big right. reveal. All right. Um, so we we're going to do Star Citizen stuff, hey? I was, I, we we're going to, but we've, like, We've got some time to kill too, so I wanted to ask a question because I haven't, you know, I've got a new house. I've been focused on other things. I know this is that there be about traffic lights again, isn't it? 
No, no, it's not. It's about Star Citizen. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing oh us my. onto topic. But I have a question because I haven't been following this very much. Now, I know that CIG have recently changed some, changed who gets access to PTU. Yep. And I'm wondering if someone can explain it to me, because I know there are some people that are very angry about this. And once again, I don't understand the anger, because I never do. But I haven't been able to follow it, because I've, I've had life. Um, but I'd love to know what, what's going on. I can give you a quick breakdown if you want. Yeah. Um, for the most... Basically, they had too many people in Wave 1 PTU. And so they were going from Evo Cotti to um sorry i just gotta mute my stream here there we go um they're going from evo Cotti to uh directly to wave one and going from only like a few testers like dozens i'm guessing or hundreds to like thousands and it was mm -hmm. it was not a good big jump up. like it was it was huge jump yeah. and it was causing problems um so they wanted to create first of all more step more waves so there's five now um okay. second secondly they wanted to focus much more on the people who um are testing who are actually doing the stuff or actually playing ptu um so the people basically the people the number one priority is people who are playing ptu um they get is wave it one. playing or actually actively reporting doing stuff playing. looking for bugs reporting bugs just playing i think it's just playtime in PTU. Um, I am I I mean, they think they do take into account... Well, the, I think mostly they take um, issue reporting into account for Evocati. Evocati, in the yeah. Um, but uh, I think it's a lot easier for them to, like, have data uh, just about playtime. Like, that's an easy thing for them to do. It's not, like, they don't have to delve mm. deeply. Um... The yeah, but doesn't the contra that instantly yeah. give people who stream Star Citizen for a living a bit of a bonus card? If they put yeah, if, they, if they stream PTU, which isn't always the best thing in the world to be doing, because you're having problems all the time. And and what's um, to stop me, say, from just opening up Star Citizen PTU and then idling? Oh, I don't log to it after a few minutes. I mean, yeah, I guess you could set up like an auto clicker or whatever if you, but then what's the point? All you do, all you get is access to. Well, because I want PTU. my access to wave one PTU that badly. Well, then you should, then, that then you should my set life. up, you should set up an auto clicker and, and launch Star Citizen every day and just go for it. There you go. Um, That's how to exploit the system, folks. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, the other people in wave one are the, basically the highest levels of concierge and subscribers. And that's it. Um, right. The big thing that people were angry about was that subscribers were getting access at that level because they are like, oh, this is a huge cash grab. They just want people to subscribe so they get Wave 1 PTU access. Um, and that was the big controversy, basically all in one, was the Seems fact that it. they they are giving priority to people who are actively giving them money. That's essentially Seems where it's it. at. Does seem it. It Whether doesn't. It's true not, I think it's a. Like I, it. I think it's a. I think it's a nothing burger because I think that it makes. It just. It's a nothing burger wave... until you see that clickbait headline that says "Star Citizen pay now to get into earlier waves of early access of an early access game." Who cares? Because you don't have to pay. It's a bonus if you're paying. Or you could just play the game. If you care enough that you want to get into earlier waves, then just play, play it and you'll get into the earlier wave. Right? I mean, it's like, the optics so of the thing. I, so I, I don't even think they make it into the it body is, of text. It is the absolutely the optics of it. I don't... I under... While I was reading it, I simultaneously understood where the controversy came from and also personally didn't think it was worthwhile at all as a controversy. It's just like... See, 
to me, this is actually Whatever. great because for a long time, subscribers have been saying, make the subscription worthwhile. Like, what is mm -hmm. it in the subscription that is worth my while to be subscribing? Yep. Okay. This makes it worthwhile to subscribe. People have been asking that for a long time. And you do have to, to balance. Now, if Wave 1 was only subscribers, yes, that would be a problem. Yeah. But it's not. It's yeah. people who play most. So who cares? And the, yeah, like, and, the, and the number one priority is, is the people who play the most. The other thing that they, they mentioned is that... Um, so basically why, why they split it up into five ways is to get... like a, They wanted to create five groups with like actually like you know fairly i think fairly even numbers of people in them so that they can add them in and then have like a gradual increase in user user count one of the things they did mention too is that they don't expect there to be long delay this is will leverett made this comment he said he doesn't expect there to be long delays between like wave one wave two wave three wave four wave five um kind of a different approach but they wanted to slowly phase it up so that if they have a problem in wave one they can catch it when they only have like you know a smaller number of players yeah type of deal i mean uh, I, yeah it, it's it makes sense and all but it's also yep. very much the optics oh yeah that's absolutely uh, up, that, the that's the biggest thing but, and but I it's don't the think it necessarily think... was the best way to sort the players was just by play time what else what's better when they want people who are playing it People who um, people who are report. actively doing bug reports. Yeah, but they're Evocati. They choose yeah, Evocati from bug. Yeah, but the people that are reporting bugs the most and playing the most are Evocati, and then the next set is Wave yeah. One. They get invited to Evocati, so they're no, already I, I doing that with Evocati. By you know actual reports and things and then uh, you know not just reports other factors as well because if you just rely on one thing it's a bit shit Wait, why why not see, play I, time though i think i think well i don't know play time does not necessarily in you know mean usefulness uh phasmophobia for instance right I, i'm level oh god i was level 1100 there are people with a lower level than me that know that game better than me level does not necessarily they don't, incur see, knowledge i think what they're looking for here are people that are going to be playing that who actually are uh, going to play the ptu because they need they, to load on the server like it, it, like it, in, a, in a certain way all they really care about is that so there's somebody who's logging in because they need someone who's actually playing to load the server and, and to you know and and it's not just up. that it's they need to know yeah. that when they start up wave one they're going to get a consistent number of people, right? They're going to say, these yeah, are the yeah. first 5,000 people, and all of them almost always play. So when we release Wave 1, we're going to get 5,000. Like, we can control that Wave 1 number. So it, it is about playtime, much less than bug reporting, because you can have someone that plays 200 hours and never encounters a bug because they're playing mining and there are no bugs. I think you mean 200 seconds. Yes, I know. <laughs> Sorry, that was amazing. <laughs> oh, I wish I could play 200 hours of Star Citizen without finding a bug. Um, I'm not, that not would be a different, that would be a different saying, game. But... <laughs> um, so I'm curious about everybody in chat. What do you think? Do you think it's a it's a stupid move or that they did something bad or that they're just it's just a cash grab? I honestly don't think they're gonna make a lot of money. And, and I don't think it's worth thinking <laughs> about or anything like that, to no. be quite honest with you. I'm not on I'm not on the side of the uh, people who are up in arms about it either. I'm just a bit mm, I don't think that's the best way to do it, but mm. what I wanted to say, Shiver, was it's Star Citizen no matter what they do, someone is going to find something in the yeah. optics that is bad. And yeah. and it's not just for Star Citizen. It's for everything. You can, like, go on YouTube and search Baldur's Gate 3, and you'll find people that are like, Baldur's Gate 3 is the worst video game ever made. Here's 10 reasons oh, why. Yeah. Uh, shut yeah. the fuck up. Like, like there is there is this... You know, it's rage baiting, right? It's how do we mm -hmm. clickbait and rage bait Amazing. and like it, mm. so 
you know, people people get too angry. Everyone needs to breathe a bit, take a pill, take a couple more pills, probably a couple more <laughs> pills, assuming we're Americans, a lot of pills. Um, and just, you know. Can I uh can sure. I share something fairly hilarious? Of course. There is an this was posted on the Star Sibs and the subreddit. There is a uh from uh, from aerospace engineering blog there is a an article titled predicting the spacex starship interior yes a glimpse I saw into the that. spaceship interior of this revolutionary vessel and it is a picture of the constellation phoenix <laughs> interior i saw that with the um, hot tub look no word of a lie <laughs> no word of a lie i think if everyone seriously i think if everyone took an, an oval team break like when oh, you when God. you get yourself worm, worked up oh, and, and you're no feeling Ovaltine. angry, you're like, no, I'm gonna take an oval team break, and you uh, go, you get yourself. See, there's you a trick to make it yourself for drinking oval team. No, no, no. This see, interesting logic. You you need to. There's a trick to making oval team properly. You can't pour in the milk and then put in the oval team because it clumps a lot. So what, what you, you have do to do is just pour in the milk and then you walk away. <laughs> no, no. See. You pour in a little bit of milk, then you pour in or you scoop in some Ovaltine, then you mix it really well in that because it mixes better in a small amount than in a large amount. Then you pour in more milk and mix it again. And then I you just want to fucking drink at this point. I'm just like, oh, God. It's the ritual. It's, it's like making tea for you Brits, isn't it? It's the ritual of the thing. I don't drink tea. They're weird. I can't stand British tea. It's fucking gross. Well, British tea, yeah. You're in I mean, Japan. I British tea before I know. Oh, I'd love uh, green tea. Green tea, tea is lovely. And Nihon cha. So good. So good. But... Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, anyway, Dutch knows the terms. I have. I'm I'm having an Irish tea. <laughs> Say wow. that because I'm partially Pretty... Irish. I'm pretty sure the Irish would know. Oh, this week you're partially medicine. Irish. I am. I'm half Irish. He's I'm half, half Irish, Irish, half Italian, no Canadian now. No, all Canadian. Half Irish, half Italian, all Canadian. That's how Canada works. This is why yeah, you have to apologize all the time. No, it's, it's true. <laughs> like... It, Amer America I'm... is America's the melting pot. You move to America and everybody is supposed to become America. Like they're supposed yeah. to become American. That's like America's thing. Whereas do Canada, Canada is like, I don't remember what the term for it is, but you are where you came from in Canada. It's more important. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm half Irish and half Italian. My, one of my last names is McManus. So, how many last Shiver. names do you have? Who? Elogia McManus. I want to know how an Italian and an Irishman met. Or I want to know how an Italian know. and an Irishman met. In a bar. People <laughs> met, uh, well, yeah, <laughs> in a bar. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the prisoner. Oh. Oh, man. I, Darge, I'm just going to sail right by that comment. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, da uh, we figured out Dodge's name. Cervix. Uh, <laughs> Eric, there's been a couple uh, couple requests for the link to that um, article. On, if you can link on. that. Alrighty. Oh. I wish I had that energy when I was your age. <laughs> I put a pull-up bar at the stairs. You can't really see the stairs. They're over. They're over there. Some. Uh, yeah, they're. Yeah, they're over there. Um, I put a pull-up bar there. Oh, dash. so I'm I never can, gonna I can... unsee that. <laughs> I mean, I am. Every time I dance, <laughs> there's a song. <laughs> 
more of like a. So talking there's... of music and sounds. Sounds like a good time to switch over to uh, our show and tell. Which is more of a peer show and tell. Show, hear and tell. Yeah, I'm going to stop. Look, listen. Oh. Thank you, Versa Life. Versa. Um, so I think this is just the prettiness. So I think the other clip has the sounds, but we've got pretty and sound. So let me try and get the sounds up and see how this works. Just forgive me. No. Do we have to forgive you? No. No. We've been showing off a lot of art, the last two at least, but we've been showing off things that are something that you would take for granted when it's done right. It's just there, and you're like, this is good, this is good. you know, the um, audio resonance and... VFX oh, stuff. Hey, thank VFX. you. Uh, it's, it's stuff that is brilliant to have, that when it's working really really well it's just there and you to accept it for what it is rather than go oh that's down there oh that's down there. it uh, helps the immersion mm. a lot and i'm wondering whether or not this is because and uh, don't go quoting me on this but they're saving the really big stuff for six yes Con. yes this year is gonna be the year for the big six Con, right this no. year we we've got to get it no. right one time next year no, no, it's gonna be it's gonna be twenty forty two. Uh, um, yeah. So that one will be huge. I Darsh, <laughs> I I agree with you. I think the the pistol resonance was a bit much, especially on the laser pistol, which I don't think the laser gun should have that much of a sound. Like, there's no explosion happening in the gun. It's a laser. I think they're just turning it up. I'm hoping they're just turning it up just for the demonstration because he's right. Dodge almost, is right. Yep. Almost well, that certainly and they walking. Are, they're just trying to demonstrate yeah. the resume. Yeah. The, the sounds of the walking were a little too much, and I'm sure they'll tone it down. I'm yeah. I think they toned it up for the like. I think they wanted it. to be able to actually get people to hear what was happening mm. in the scene. Yeah. Normally, I think normally when they're doing like when they're actually trying to mix it so it's how they want it, I think that, that it will be all about just trying to make sure that it's as immersive as possible, not yeah. to, like, point out this effect that they're doing. Yeah, and I, I thought there was a little, like, um, some of the times when the, um, like, the missiles are hitting the ship, the rattling fades off too quickly. Like, it rattles and then it's gone. Like, it... it it needs some tweaking, but what mm -hmm. what this was really oh, all yeah. about isn't so much the sounds that we're hearing. It's about the tools that are going to enable them to do this, right? Exactly. Um, and the tools sounds like it's really easy. I'm really hoping that they can, like, add this to a cardboard box and then ah. that instance of that cardboard box everywhere in the game has it added to it automatically. You don't have to like... Yes, Shiver, go ahead. I'm so glad you said that. I think that with the way that they're setting all of this up, you know how you've got... Let's, let's, let, let, let's, I'm just going to use terms that hopefully most people can understand and relate to because I don't know the exact technical terms myself but let's say in the database of stuff materials textures and so on and so on and so on they have metal they have felt they have cloth and mm -hmm. so on and so on they know how flammable that is they can also tie into the properties of that the sound that it makes when you step on it the sound reverberation so that way it's just when they literally make a new sized cardboard box, it's just like we grab that one, we grab that one, and then it just 
magically works. And, and it works across that that all of the them. way to do it. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's, oh, that's exactly. the idea. Yeah. And it's just, and rather than making mm. specific calls for the object, I think the way that they've set it up with, I think they call it data for it or whatever. Like the, mm-hmm. the, the single fucking database that's got everything in it. So it saves a bit of time with you having to download gigabytes and gigabytes of information that it just makes a reference to that. And it's quickly sent back saying, that's this, that's this. Yeah. There could be other ways. There's many, many other ways to do it. That is just a theory. Oh, that's North interesting. End. Cool. Oh, yeah. It's, I mean... It is, Dave. Okay. It's a North really... Trooper. It is one of those things that you're like... Would you notice this if it wasn't in the game? No. Nope. Will you notice it now that they've told you about it and you go play and it's not in the game maybe is it going to help the game that it's in it yes it's one of those things as well if it wasn't there you'd notice it suddenly is this one of those one of those things where you're playing for a little while and you're like man the sound is great in this game (laughs) yeah i'm i've got a bunch of comments about the sounds right they seem decent Mm -hmm. i'm a little bit worried about repetition of them they need to add some almost some randomization in it um one thing that i noticed was in one of the scenes when they were shooting close lockers and then they turned and shot some far away lockers the sounds were identical it Mm. wasn't any quieter for the further away locker like so there's there's some stuff and it might just be the presentation and how they how they you know filmed it and whatever but that they can now sort of make these changes and they were saying that they can make them sort of on the fly you know live right that's yeah. again, again like we've like we've seen a lot they're also codeless changes they're done entirely yeah. in what the heck, heck was that tool called again do you do you remember the name of the tool they're using Claudius. Claudius, thank you. Yeah. So they don't need to delve into code to do this. It's yeah. uh, done now, in, a, in a tool. Now. <laughs> Clav did. I may, I, I may seem strange for saying this, but. Please David, you always seem strange. I know. It's part of my charm. You when I, it, Ovaltine's delicious. I don't care. Um, when I was watching this episode, one thought kept popping into my head. Was, a, and thinking about it, and now looking back and thinking about a bunch of episodes that we've seen, it sort of seems like a bit of a theme to me, and maybe I'm crazy, but. Uh, and yes, North End, Rainbow Six Siege, phenomenal audio. It's one of the most important aspects of the game. It's insane, but um, sorry, tangents. Um, this episode, when they were talking about it and talking about the tool, sounded so much like an advertisement for the tool and for the engine and for what they can do in the engine. Like, it sounded... It, it sounded like an ad. What's wrong, Shiver? They're not going to be able to sell it. It's Amazon's property. They don't own Lumberyard. They've licensed Lumberyard. Still is it Amazon still on Disney. Lumberyard? As yes. far as we know. Yeah. They call it Star Engine because of they call the it Star Engine. Monume- monumental number of changes they've made to it, but it is still on hmm. Lumberyard. Yeah. But even, like, I'm just... The base. I still wonder, like, what does Amazon get out of this? And they get a game they get a, for their they get a, They are using this engine for all of their games. They get it yes. to... They can say that this this game used our engine 
and then it, it's part well, of their advertisement. I just, like, will there be any tools that go back and forth? Very possibly. That is that is part of the thing that could happen, is that there could be games made using Lumberyard that use pieces... Use that, Claudius, that use the yeah. tools that um, CIG are developing. They would have to have some discussion about, you know, what that looks like. We don't know anything about this. This is all complete speculation, but it seems to yep. me... Like, a little mean, bit of these episodes is advertising, like, this is what we can do, this is how easy it is, this is, like... Well, to take um, it in a slightly different direction for your advert theory, it could be, but not in the way you're saying, it could actually be, hey, are you a game designer, are you a coder, do you want to work doing this? Yeah, Cause definitely. we got lots That's of spaces! Of yeah. That's part of it, for sure. Yeah, but also, it's... Oh. Um, but yeah, like, and they, they're always going to need more from Amazon too. Um, the amount of server servers that Star Citizen is going to need is basically infinite. <laughs> many, many, many servers. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and so I think there will probably be some, like, it wouldn't surprise me at all to see some, like, technology trading agreements. Um, <laughs> So that they get more servers and for like yep. no money, but they give them like some of their work. Tech. CIG have made the tech already, right? Like they've yep. made the tech. They're going to use the tech. Yep. If they can sell the tech too, then, you know. Yeah, there is no Lumberyard logo anymore. Uh, there was for a little while. Um, I still think it technically... I don't think that CIG and RSI like outright own the engine entirely. I could be wrong though. If it, someone knows different, please <sighs> let me know. I don't like. Lumberyard I don't even know if uh, Lumberyard isn't exactly open source. It's source available on GitHub, but still under proprietary license. They've made another engine which is open source called called Open 3D Foundation, which is under the Apache 2.0 open source license. But Lumberyard, like anyone can build a game using Lumberyard, and then it's sort of the, like the Unreal licensing in theory. thing. In, in theory. theory, yeah. It's, it's not the friend. It's not the most friend. You know, user friendly engine to work no. with. No. Yeah. No. Uh, anyway, I I don't know. I was like this cool. episode, the VFX one last week, where they were talking about how easy it is for them to update these VFX and update them across the entire light. Like, I don't know. It just got me think, thinking that a lot. Like, eh. I think they're also trying to sell to the players, though, that like, yes, we mm. can actually make the game. Yes, yes. we can do it. The, we we are building these things so that we don't need to spend days and days and days making a sound effect you know but it um, is it's all advertisement yeah. to various different oh, targets yeah, yeah but totally, that's yeah. what isc is it's an ad it's <laughs> a billion <Yeah>. ads <laughs> yeah oh um, man yeah it, it's it's it was inevitable that it was going to happen the larger the company gets the more corporate it has to get Gone are the days where you would it would be acceptable for CIG to have a twenty four hour stream with hours of a lamp. Yep. Which is unfortunate because they need to go for dinner. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's progress, but it's also that they're still trying to at least keep a line of communication directly open to us. But it's no longer as direct as it once was. You know, we're, we're no longer hundreds of backers. Yeah, we're a couple and, of hundreds of dollars. To, to be clear, we're we are getting some high quality. Like the ISCs this year have been oh, great. Please. They've been interesting. Been They've been really well put together. I... The team they have doing the like background visuals is like spectacular. Honestly, like the stuff that they're pulling together is hilarious. Um, like the the murder pico and like they're they're doing a really good job with it. And I'm glad, and it's great. But 
yeah, I think we're I think we're definitely getting into the we're almost at Citizen Con. Yeah. What do we what do we show them? Yeah, the claw. So good. But like we're we're it's almost Citizen Con. What do we show them? What do we keep for Citizen I mean they they decided this months ago, right? Like they they are, get yeah. a schedule These at the beginning of the up. year. This is planned yeah. out for a long time, but we're we're reaching the like Every it's year it's down. progress, right? Right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Are you. Why is there a question at the end of that? It should, it should have been a statement. Sure. I need reassurance. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, there's definitely a lot of progress. I'm, um, I'm at, I'm in one of, to be completely honest, and this is something that happens to most people that follow Star Citizen, especially those that follow Star Citizen as vociferous or as frequently as us. Um, and it's vociferously something that is a pretty good word too. I, I, I was love vociferously. Reason, no, yeah, I, I sometimes if I'm... we were trees, it would be coniferously. <laughs> Only if we were a certain type of tree. If we were vegetarian, it would be corniferously. And if we were meteors, it would be carnivorously. Oh, now you're getting dear. it. Yeah. Oh, um, there are ebbs and flows. Who to... are you flowing or ebbing? I am oh. ebbing. <laughs> I know. I'm. The, I'm. The, I'm in an the ebb. Game's not as, the, the game's not as playable at the moment. It's not as and, playable. Well, actually, and also, it, there's a lot of other really good games. Right it's now. just there's <laughs> other it, things. Yeah. CIG's marketing has always been here is the carrot, chase the carrot. It always has been. It has to be at that point because yep. what we have right now is it's it's not a game. It's not. It's an early access to basically developer builds that they've just tied a little bow around and said go for it let us know as you go yeah. which is they don't have to do and no company really has to do it they they promised it during the kickstarter but they sort of have to because they they're promised not beholden it, but... to it yeah but there's, there's there's no legal or moral obligation to okay there's a moral obligation there's to, a moral there's no not legal, legal obligation to it we're not entitled technically to fucking anything you've got to keep that in mind when you are sat there buying this big ship or whatever uh, you're not legally entitled to it. They, they can turn around at any point, completely change the deal. Hopefully, you're in a place, if you don't like that deal being changed, you can get a refund, which, you know, consumer rights are a thing, and they should be a thing. But you are they make it as clear as they possibly can that you are buying something to support the project. That's what you're really mm -hmm. doing, is supporting the project. And if you want to go that extra mile... Here you go. You can play in what we have at the moment that we've released for you. Please do bug reports. Again, you're not under any fucking obligation. They're not paying you to sit there and do bug reports. So it, it it's a, it's still a two way street. I can't remember where I was going with this. My migraine's killing me, and now he's doing a Baywatch impression. You know what's yeah, really David funny? David Hasselhoff let himself go. You know what's really funny, David? What's that? The first two words on your shirt are the uh, the names of one of my friend's cats. Nice. Barley and hops. <laughs> I hate this shirt. It's also, I really like it. It's also how an Australian describes a one-legged kangaroo. <laughs> Barley up. <laughs> Barley, Barley up. ops. Oh, that kangaroo! He barley ops. Yeah. How the hell did how you come you up with that in like four point two seconds? How do you do that? Mm -hmm. That was. I feel, like... my, I feel my brain with this TTRPG rules and fuck all else. So it's very bad. <laughs> it was very good. Um, no, and and Shiver, you're right with basically everything you were saying, and oh, that's okay. No, it's, it's, yep. there's a lot of other interesting things right now. Baldur's Gate is fantastic. Um, you know, Starfield is out in a couple weeks. 
uh armored core six which i'm actually really excited for is out in next week i think there's yeah, lies of p which looks great it, like there's just i'm still still playing through friggin tears of the kingdom Tears of the kingdom yeah there is this is a really really good year for video games and we all me and me and shiver stare longingly at city skylines 2 in october so do i it looks incredible i do love i i just yeah. i i i send i send him videos like every week <laughs> oh yeah i watch him i watch him i just forget afterwards that i've watched him and say oh thanks <laughs> but i watch I'm, him and i'm uh, I'm, it, mm, I'm intrigued I, what's mm, that there's that really kingdom good. building one that i'm really excited for uh, um kingdom building it's like the one man dev I'm, team no, oh, you're the Manor one that showed it to. Me. Yeah, Manor, Manor Lords. Lords. Oh, Manor yeah, Lords yeah, looks yeah. amazing. He's a, it's not a one man dev team anymore. He's I think he's trying to get the game out the door. He's brought on okay. a bunch of other people. That's um, good. he did like ninety percent of the work, but he's bringing yeah. in. He's got a publisher now. He like a small mm. one. He's got, he's bringing in people to help him. Animators and yeah. you know like we gotta get the game out the door here. <laughs> yeah. So I got yeah. two questions. Um, I'm gonna ask them one at a time because it's probably easier that yeah. way. And I'm asking them to you guys and to whomever. No, no, wants don't to... ask them one at a time. Mix them together and ask them both at the same time. <laughs> Poor David. His brain just like ate hey. itself. Hey, hang on. And replace the first letter of each word with the letter P. And the last letter of each word with the number seven. A seven, came seven, feature seven. Poor seven, po seven, <laughs> po seven, it is seven. Okay, David, can you just place the middle of each word with the emotion of ennui? <laughs> Fire While you're doing it, consider the entropy of the universe. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that seems like a constant. It was a dark and stormy night, and there was no point to any of it. For all was ephemeral, and time was a machine. The point of nothing, and nothing for no one, and everything is darkness, and nothing really matters. Um, All right, so, Jesus. You asked me to consider entropy. I said to consider entropy, not be the most depressing cunt <laughs> since Frederick Nietzsche. It's, oh, I said the bad word. I'm sorry. No doubt, but it should be. It's, a, it's, a, it's our best show ever. All of our shows every are the week. best show ever. Every week. <laughs> yep. No. I know. That's because we just keep getting better. I've got two serious questions for you and for, for everyone else. The first okay. one is going to be what game that is coming in the rest of this year are you most excited for? Nothing that's no, sure. out. Nothing that's coming out next year. Coming out the rest of this year. Does early access count? Yes. If I can play it now in early access, but it's not yes. released yet, does that count? Yes. Oh, that still doesn't help me, though. M many games are coming, The Prisoner. The Prisoner, sorry. Way too many. Only one is what we're allowed. Yep. You bastard. One. I can answer if you want to, if I can buy you some time. This one's an easy one. Stuber um, needs to vacillate. So, I am really excited for Starfield, and I'm really excited for other games, but the one that I'm most excited for is City Skylines 2. It is, uh, we rarely get, like, really good quality city building games. Um, I'm really glad somebody took over for Maxis when they uh, got eaten. Um, but uh, it's been a long time since City Skylines 1. It's going to be really nice to have a real, like, excellent city building game again so that's the one north end that is that is a 
that is a high quality um um phantom liberty phantom liberty's um, um serious submission yeah that's a good submission serious serious option for sure that that does help me eric i don't have to say that one now thanks i can unconsider that <laughs> shiver do you need some more time should i go yeah go on yeah go for all it. right um, between two i mean i'm really excited for starfield i think but i don't know so I think what I'm actually more excited for than Starfield for some reason, I don't really know why, because I've never played any of the other ones, but everything I've seen about Armored Core 6 makes me really excited. It's, it's you know, Dark Souls pedigree with giant robots. The Smurfs 2. Didn't know that was coming he's out. Dodge is surprisingly close to what I'm thinking, actually, if he's not... Are you doing thinking the meme that I think he might be doing? Trevor, are you thinking that Sims competitor? I don't know no, if he's like... next year, babe. Is that next year? I think so. They delayed it. Ah, oh, damn. Okay. Because that looks There's good. There's a competitor for the Sims? Yes, Finally. it looks Paradox. great. Fuck. Yeah. Looks Took great. Fucking, fucking ever. Paradox. Jesus. It looks a bit more uh, serious as well, rather than a bit more cartoony that The Sims are currently cool. direction where wise went. So this is I, life or something like I that. Thought, I thought Somewhere you were there, joking, yeah. Darge. There actually is the Smurfs Two game coming out this year. So I I apologize for thinking you were joking. Oh, I'm glad you're excited. Darge is mean. legit excited for it. That's that's. Awesome. I thought he was memeing about the same game that I'm leaning towards what is it shiver well rogue trader hasn't got a release date bloodlines 2 is <laughs> ether. so that just leaves space marines 2 and he said the smurfs 2 and i thought be the nickname for the ultra fucking marines which you fucking have to fucking play are smurfs are smurfs i'm excited so for space marine 2 actually saying. um mm. commander keen 3 is that I loved Commander Keen as a kid. Commander Keen was great. Like, are they seriously a making a new Commander Keen? I don't know. Someone needs to look that up for me. Because if they are, I'm, I'm, I'm in. Oh, Commander Keen three already exists. That's what I thought. Aren't there like six um, of them or something? No, it's two. That's why they're bringing out the third one. Because if there were six of them, it'd be Commander Keen seven. Well, apparently Commander Keen is three already exists. It was from a while ago. Let's see. Um. Okay, so I did have another question yeah, for Rona. Them. And this one is a Star Citizen related question. So, you know, getting us back oh. on the track. And that would be what feature for Star Citizen are you most excited for that's coming? <laughs> Stalker. Yes. I I don't know when that's coming out cuz fuck Russia. Um I will buy that game so hard. I don't even have to buy the, it uh, and I'm going to buy they it. They haven't been affected by the war. They have so been far at least. They, they delayed it. Been, yes, they times. delayed it. Um and, and they, they also a, they delayed it a couple times actually cuz they yep. were they were affected. Yeah. And they also recently asked everyone and, to ignore uh, any leaks because uh, Russia hacked them. Yeah, yeah. They, they got, got hacked. People. It's um, and I, yeah. I think I remember seeing that. I think I think a couple of their devs died. Yeah, uh, there yeah, were several was... of their devs that went off to fight and died. So it's been rough yeah, for the stalker devs. Been bad. I feel really bad um, for them. And stalker. I'm, I'm excited for the game. It's gonna stalker be two is one that I don't have to buy. It's coming on Game Pass. Um, but I'm going to buy it with gonna buy it money because anyway. yeah. I want to give them my money. Mm -hmm. um. Um. <clears throat> oh, so the, your second question, um, upcoming feature that I'm excited about for Star Citizen. Yeah. Pyro. Pyro. All right. Or did you specifically want a feature, not a system? I wanted a not feature. Not like a star system. 
You wanted, I wanted a, feature. a feature. Uh, the feature I'm most excited for coming up would probably be. Oh, that one's well. Hmm, it's hard to define. I'm gonna say. I was gonna say uh, like base building for players because that just sounds like fun. But actually, that's not the thing I'm most excited for. It's the um, it's the basically I can't remember exactly what it's called. It's the inter like it's resources, right? It's integration of all of the ship's components and all of base components together into like things that actually like operate. Um, things like power and mine, resource flows, management, power flows yeah. through relays, and, and Stro yeah, still mine yeah. too, because that's oxygen resource is, management is basically multi-crew. Yeah, resource management, um, and that that ties into base building as well, because that's you know you're gonna need power and and oxygen and everything for your base as well. So yeah, that, but it also be, ties yeah, into multi-crew, right? Because it does heavily. Multi-crew is what is you know is multi-crew is managing and repairing and facilitating those resources right yeah. so the, you stole mine you bastard stole mine um, too that's what, most, that's what i'm most excited for um go david <laughs> uh, fuck you um <laughs> i mean if i have to skip resource management fuck um yeah. Oh, I got one. Okay. Okay, go, go shiver. for it, shiver. Uh, space combat being complete. complete. Everything, like, this is it. This is the gold standard. Shit. Ooh, I like it. There so probably go. probably once it's locked down and sealed for, uh, exactly, for a yeah. squadron. Yeah, that'd be good. Exactly. Cool. exactly. I mean, I'm, I'm excited for a new star map. I'm and that's going to link in directly to Ooh. Squadron. I'm very excited for Squadron. Uh, that's going to link directly into it because that's, you know, the biggest factor, I think, of Squadron is the space combat. Once that's locked yep. down and in, you know, you know, you know, Squadron's getting that much closer, a big chunk closer. Um, Are you? Oh no, you're not into the tour. Walks half a mile to the other side of his room. Yeah, I know. It's 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 <laughs> impressive. All right, so I had a thought. What was um, your thought? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain my thought. Oh, because in a lot of that's car refactor is good, but basically Star we're Cit really excited for this fucking game. Star Citizen is at the end of the day an MMO. And there are a couple of things that have existed in very many MMOs. Things such as, you know, slash dance, right? The ability to dance. Mm -hmm. and, and that's in Star Citizen. You can do some dances. Um, yep, I know where it's going. Do you? Where am I going? You're going to have playable music in games like Lord <laughs> of the Rings, aren't you? I want to be able to plug a Guitar Hero <laughs> controller in and play music in star citizen with a guitar hero controller that's what i want i don't ask, think ask jake he'll definitely forward it off to one of the devs <laughs> and then then we'll get it in the damn game and it'll be all your fault uh this is this is from no, the i hope they add that in but all you can play is david Has david hasselhoff songs uh this is from the beatles rock band kit uh, that came out a long while ago, and yes, it's a hopper. I want one of these basses someday. Like, it's such a pretty instrument. I love it. I love it. Just, ah. Uh. Someday. When I've got, you know, thousands of dollars to spend. Which will be never. Yes. See? That's what I want, Darsh. That's what I want. I I will agree with at least the idea of opening <coughs> opening up so you can have anything as a plug-in and it be a controller, which I hope uh, they have mentioned many, many moons ago. But I want to see more people with cockpit sims. I live mm. for that yeah. shit. I love that. There have been some just more. incredible ones that I've seen over mm -hmm. the years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More of them, please. 
Can you yeah. can you imagine like the ultimate one that's got everything in just the right place for some person's favorite ship, and they put on the VR helmet? So it's <laughs> can you imagine? Oh yeah. Sorry, sorry. Oh. Um. Anyway, yeah, I want to play a washboard with my hotels. Yes. I want my washboard to be a hotas. Armored Core 6 comes out in six days. I know. I'm excited. I'm really excited. I'm just looking through looking through the upcoming games. There's some interesting ones for the rest of the year. It's gonna it's I'm a sorry, good year. It's not, but I now have to look that up. That sounds fucking old. Star Citizen Payday, Lux Bus. Payday three Payday three looks interesting. Um I think I really do think Star Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty has the potential to revive that game, like in a serious not, way. I am going to. I did not play very far in Cyberpunk when it launched, and I have not touched it since because I've always been waiting for you know them to fix the game. With this patch, I think I'm going to jump in. It sort of sounds like they are updating all of the things that needed to be updated. Um, Finally, and yeah. yeah, you're you're right. North End, like <laughs> CD CDPR, need to redeem themselves after Cyberpunk, um, because oh, Cyberpunk they definitely. And they're going to be making more. Like they have two teams now, so they're going to be making more games. They need to have a refurbished reputation going into their next launch. Yeah, yeah. I I I don't think they're going to. I think that this the the patch will be good. I don't think it's going to be enough to completely restore their their nope. um reputation. Yeah, but I think it'll help and I hope that it will be enough that they now know what will happen if they do the same shit. Mm -hmm. Like they can't do this again. Mm -hmm. Um They're I... really lucky that they're really lucky that they made I... Anyway, go ahead. I was still still disappointed with Cyberpunk. I I oh, yeah. Uh, just, yeah, it wasn't yeah. as good as it should have been. I'm going to I'm excited for the DLC because I'm hoping lots of the things that they've been talking about in the DLC are the things that it should have launched with, right? They should have delayed it two years. It sounds like this is the game that they should have made in the first place. We'll just have to wait and see. This is one you definitely wait and you see the, the cops uh, that chase you. Um, you know, actual meaningful skill trees, like like a more living city, like the stuff that was like, why isn't this there? Yeah. It sounds like this is supposed to fix a lot of that. And you know, yeah. I have to say that. There's a lot of thought of, like, once a, a developer fucks up a game, there's not much they can do to recover from it. But oh, No Man's lost. Sky... Like, looking at the journey that No Man's Sky has taken from, holy like, an abysmal launch to, honestly, a really good game, they have supported the hell out of it mm -hmm. all for free, I played it a bunch um, earlier this year. I had I hadn't played it like I played it a little bit at when it launched, and then I didn't play it again until like earlier this year. And I played for probably I don't know yeah. sixty seventy hours. I had a great time. It was a, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, um, it's a great game. It is a really uh, good game. I'm not surprised at all that people play it a lot still. Um, it's not the perfect game for me, which is why I didn't keep playing it endlessly. Yeah. But um, I really did enjoy what I played of it. So uh, yeah. thumbs up to them. They they spent years getting that game from you know super mediocre state into like a really actual high quality game. So props to Hello Games. Yep. yep. Uh, and North End, yes. Uh, the sad fact is right now most devs get death threats. Um, Oh, I know yeah. that creative creative assembly right now are getting death threats because they've uh, they've announced their new DLC for Total War Warhammer Three and it's more expensive than previous ones, so they're getting death threats for that. Um, you know, 
CIG Ooh, devs get death threats. A bit more nuance to the Total Warhammer Three disappointment, but there's no never an excuse for a death threat. Nope. I don't. I I I vehemently disagree with the um narrative that is going around on around that. I think they're actually doing bigger changes to these races than people are accepting. They are making large changes to the race for all three of these uh, legendary lords. They're fixing thousands of bugs. Is it worth... Like, is it more expensive than previous DLCs? Yes. People are saying... Like, the one of the how most how common... How expensive is it here? Is it like $100? It's $20. Oh, well, it's fine. Twenty bucks. Yeah, but it used to be three or four. No, it and used to be more. Apparently, no. It used to be it, the lowest price. It was was like ten dollars, and you got you know three, maybe four lords, but they were. It was just a lord, like it was just a new lord. They didn't have well, new didn't mechanics. You get five they didn't lords have... a leaping, <laughs> and three ladies singing or whatever it is. Yeah. Um... Um... The, the so they thing made less is, substantial changes, and they're charging more for it in an environment where inflation's gone through the roof. I I don't. It's fine. And people are saying, "Well, if you're going to charge more, you should give us more." Okay, but that's not how it works. If they're like they're they're going to charge what they charge. If they're going to give you more, they're going to charge more for it. Yeah. Like, just anyway. We're, I'm I'm waiting to so see let me what get happens. This straight. A Games Workshop related product is charged at an extremely high price, and people are shocked. I think it's one of the very best strategy video games ever made. Um, it's very. I've good. I it's very enjoyable. Yeah. have already pre-ordered the DLC because money is less of an object for me. But are, I is it is it less buggy now? I haven't played it in a long time. It's for it's. I mean, it's still buggy. It's a huge game, but it's less buggy. Yeah. Um, I guess yeah, my problem always, is it's I. It's the evolution, right? I hate the idea. Like it's being review bombed, right? It's gone from mm -hmm. like very positive down to mostly negative, and yeah. I hate the idea that you can dislike the cost of something, so you something that you love enough to get this angry about and you're going to review bomb it to kill it so that they don't continue to support it because you like it wait for the dlc to launch review bomb the dlc saying it's too expensive complain about the dlc itself fine the game fuck off it's a good game you love the game mm -hmm. you've put a thousand hours into the game don't vote it negative i i hate that i hate it i think it's so disingenuous to say i love this game but this decision that they made makes me hate the game no no you still love the game yeah yeah i do i do agree you should take that out on the dlc review not on the main games review because it has nothing to do with the main game. People can buy the main game and love it and have no idea the DLC even exists. Yep. <laughs> um, I don't think I don't think review bombing the main game is is um a uh, right path to take in that case. And and Darge, I know this is I know this is gamers we're talking about, but I hate gamers. We're 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 horrible. You do not hate we're gamers. Horrible. <laughs> Shiver, what do you think? No, I don't. <laughs> couldn't care you less. You couldn't That's care fair. less. Yeah. That's, fair. That's fair. Um, look, I'm trying to fill time. David. We've got nothing Star Citizen David. to no, talk I get about. No, no. Oh, oh, if you want a detailed response, all right. I find re reviews, even if they're bombing them, very useful because I sit there and I read through them and I actually look at the number of hours that someone's put into a game. I see what they're saying and what they're actually focusing on. If they're just sat there saying, "Oh, well, the game's okay," but blah 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 blah. blah 
okay, that's worth consideration. Next one, same bullshit. Next one, same bullshit. It's like, okay, so DLC bad. I'm sat here thinking, well, DLC is fucking bad. Ludicrous idea. I fucking hate the idea of DLC. Give me an expansion pack for 15 fucking quid or whatever, where the act game is actually fucking expanded, rather than giving it to me in dribs and drabs, and I have to pay 50 fucking quid. I also don't like free-to-play games, because I think that's a load of bullshit. I'd rather play a fucking monthly sub-fee, have the fucking game that I paid for unlocked for that month, and done. Fish, bash, bosh. But I can also get the fact that some people want to play a free-to-play game and only put so much money in. But I'd like to have the option to just buy a game, buy the game, pay a monthly fee, have fucking everything done. Then when I'm done with it, discard it like a used, like I'm a done. used tissue. Oh, okay. I was going to say a wank sock, but okay. <laughs> um. Yes, Darsh, you're right. I love it. I love it. Darsh is right. Gamers need an oval teen break. Blah. She got a shiver there. Um. And the prisoner. Gamers or sports fans? Who's worse, sports fans? Sports. sports. Yeah, sports, sports, sports. sports. sports No, no, sports. No, sports I like fans. sports. Fucking sick to death of fucking sports. When I was a I fucking like sports. kid, we had to watch the fucking snooker instead of fucking Star Trek. No one watches snooker. Why am I not allowed to watch Star Trek? And then the Olympics come on. It's all about the fucking Olympics. I don't give a shit who can toss a fucking iron ball as far as they fucking can. I want some quality TV programming. You know, I don't give a fuck who can hit a fucking ball across a fucking field. Why is he getting paid more than someone who's doing actual research to better humanity? Fuck sports. Bullshit. Good question. Also raisins. Fuck raisins. Hey! Nice hat. Nice, nice uh, loose <laughs> addition there. Uh, I have a question for David. I've been trying to ask for like thirty-five minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Are you interested? Have you heard anything about Total War Pharaoh? Comes out. Not in interested a whatsoever. Cool. I've heard n no interest. Um. Uh. It's gonna be. It's honestly gonna be very hard for Creative Assembly to get me interested in a non-total war, uh, Warhammer game again. Um, one, they've got a bad history uh, with Total War Three Kingdoms. They basically launched it and dropped it and gave it no support, which is horrible because I heard it was actually a really good Total War. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm also just less interested in the historical Total War series, Rome, medieval pharaoh shogun uh three kingdoms because i find they really have limited unit rosters like yes we're playing let's say we're playing shogun okay everyone's got you know i've got my samurai and my peasant archers and my samurai archers and my you know whatever's and the other race has the exact same things and we're fighting with the same units. I want, uh, but the thing I love about Total War Warhammer is that, yeah, you know what? I'm playing, I'm playing Empire. So I've got pikemen and, you know, swordsmen with shields and some archers and uh, some, you know, musketeers. But, you know, this battle I'm against friggin, I'm against Skaven. And they've got doom wheels and rattling gunners and, you know, mortar bombers. And then the next battle I'm against, uh, friggin Seench. And Seench have pink flamers of Seench that throw fire and, and pink horror. Like, there's just so much more variety to everything in the fantasy realm. That. And I don't care about holy shit i mean i care I was about waiting holy for him to say it. hi jake hi jake how you doing buddy there's an acapella in our chat all video games are canceled. talking of them for us there is jake right. <laughs> um it is yeah i mean just to quickly comment on Baldur's Gate 3 we talked a little bit about it before but like Seriously, people should play the game if they're at all interested in in RPGs. It's um, they, it's it's not about the hype or anything like that. They just the amount. It, it's so evident when you get into that game, the sheer volume of like love and work that went into that game is very evident, and that's like that's the type of thing you want to play. Baldur's the... Gate related question. Yep. yep. Are all the lines voiced? 
Yes. yes. Including, oh. including including the animals, animals including and talking to, to the dead. With dead people. <laughs> you can kill I anyone in the game and then cast speak to dead and then talk to them and they will have things to say to you. Plus, I prefer hearing about other people's adventures in that game rather than playing it yeah, myself because I'm not a D&D no. person. That's the fair. thing that the thing that boggles my mind most is the honestly the the variety of outcomes that different people can have or even you can have in different games like i've got my solo games i went to the you know one of the first places you go as a druid encampment and you do some druidy stuff and you do some blah 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 and everyone's friendly what are you doing druid stuff right and and i leave and everyone's happy and it's great and then i do that again in another of my own games and i leave and everyone's happy it's great and then i go into that with with you know the group of friends that i'm playing with and the half orc walks in where he's not supposed to and then the druids go insane and murder everyone in the place yep. everyone is, is dead is that just druid things oh it's just everything can change and you can do like little tiny things and they just it's it's beautiful it's genuinely beautiful and there's like there's it it, yeah. it doesn't it doesn't care if you're evil oh man yeah wow, you gosh. walk in i'm sorry uh was it a half orc or was it like an orc uh giant or whatever anyway um no, read read what he says i he walked yeah in on one I, being I, made Yes. Oh yeah, 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 I know. yeah. I um. I know. Yeah, I had I've a, walked in I had on a it too. I I walked in on a uh, on a interesting union between a um hobgob was a hob yeah it was a hobgoblin and an ogre. Yeah. So here's was, the thing. One, Baldur's Great is very horny. <laughs> it is very, very horny. horny. There's <laughs> there's horny. <laughs> there is legitimately already a category on speedruns for the quickest you can have sex in Baldur's Gate. The current record, I think, is Two seven minutes. minutes. Speed that, people! Seven minutes with Lazel. Anyway. Um, <laughs> seven minutes? Wow. Yeah. Um, it's a speedrunning really speed category. Um, oh, but God, it also, Baldur's Gate also doesn't... It's very open and neutral. Like, you can be um good or you can be evil and there are completely you can be whichever like you can find people that you think are completely evil but you want to no recruit kidding. them and they can join your it's just everyone's got to play Baldur's gate 3 it is genuinely one of the best video games ever made um it is, it is. it's yeah. terrible for pickup lines though Hey oh, baby, uh, I'm one of the fastest speedrunners of sex. Wanna go? No. That's the that's what you say in in the uh, dialogue to to get there. Um, is that a, was yeah. that a sex speed run that he just did? Yes. You knew it. I mean, what else would it would it have been? It seemed pretty obvious to me. <laughs> Just see this little dot on horizon. Oh, he's coming Car back. Carlock's amazing. Um I still remember one of the first romances I ever sort of encountered in the game was in Swartor. Yeah, Swartor 2. Oh yeah. I can't remember her name. Began with a V. She was blind. Vish. Vish. Vish? Vash. Vash! Might have been Vash. She was very sweet. I don't think we banged. I can't remember. Might have just been some hand stuff around the bins. I don't know. I mean, I say bins. I kept going gong. Gong. But, mm. Um, Jake, okay, I gotta point out this, point this out because it's amazing. Jake put had in chat. I killed a werewolf by throwing a fish at its head as hard as I could. Yeah, I love it. That's about right. That's about right. The number it was of dark, like, Dodge. I'm not gonna lie, it was dark. 
there there's there's been a couple of like like big boss battles that like the giant spider right that like and it's it's the it's a you know a a queen's phase spider or whatever yep and it's giant and it's supposed to be a really hard battle and it travel it like it, it's it it's coming it of- and <laughs> you just and i and i thunder wave it off the cliff and it's dead yep like i just Fine. like it's and there's like oh i'm going to do this battle it's going to be fine it's it's you know easy and then you get wiped and then you go and do it again oh, yeah. and you don't even get to, like it's all in the rolls and it's it's a very pure well, it, D&D in, experience it's a very D&D experience it's in your preparation too right yeah. like i i did one battle and i got fucking destroyed it wasn't even close i got tpk'd and there were like eight enemies left it was just yeah. brutal it was horrible and i was like wait a second i could approach that fight differently so i did and I didn't even, I think I took like three damage with one of my characters. That was it. Killed everybody. It was great. Um, It just depends, you know? Yep. Um, No, it's, a, it's really well done. They put an enormous amount of effort into it. That's the type of thing you want to play, you know? Go for it. Oh, we still have I... intro. Yes. Yeah, I mean, we've been, we've been introducing the episode for, for 84 minutes now. I okay. think that if anyone wants a really good idea of what Baldur's Gate 3 is and what it can be, they should watch the video that I just posted in the chat. It's called Four um, Halfling Barbarians. Oh, dear Lord. And it is genuinely beautiful. It's like six and a half minutes, six, seven minutes, whatever. It's not very I am, long. I'm, I, will wa- I will watch it after we finish. When we're done you here, please, please watch it. What? If you want to know what VTM is like, watch what we do in the shadows. Yes. Or, or, and here's a better idea. Watch Table of Horrors. That's the fantastic idea. Same what's, thing. What's happening, on Table of, <laughs> what's happening on Table of Horrors this week? Oh, uh, uh shit. I don't know. Oh God, Softy hasn't put it. We've at least got Shadowrun happening Monday in your time zone with fabulous Softy Nomicon and VTM uh, with fabulous players, and I'll, I'll also be there running it. That's Friday. Both Friday, games, Friday, YouTube, Friday. PC. Excellent. Over on Twitch.tv/slash Table of Horrors. Go watch. Yes. And we've got uh, this again in a week. We do have this again in a week. Someday, me and David are going to play Baldur's Gate 3 together, and we may or may not decide to uh, stream it. We'll see. And we may or may not force Shiver to buy it and join us. I mean, that's always on the table, but I'm not sure how how successful us forcing him to buy it is going to be. I mean, if I can be a curmudgeon all the way through and deny having Ooh. any fun, that would be great. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So you're going to play, um, oh, what the hell's his name? Dude in the garbage can in Sesame Street. Can't remember his name. Oscar. Oscar. Thank you. Oscar LeVouch. Yeah. That's going to be your character? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Nice. I like it. Oh, I thought you were going to play like a flamboyant druid or something, but you yourself were going to be the curmudgeon, not your character. She could be quite fun. <laughs> Is it Bard isn't it isn't Bard always that guy in D D? <laughs> Definitely. Shiver, Shiver, just so you know, I always play Bards a Bard. Bards are awesome. Bards are yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I've played games with you before, it makes sense. <laughs> I am I that bastard. Yeah, I can see it. How yeah. many uh how many how many fights have you, you st- won str- strumming along in your you know, loot, uh, loot or whatever. His guitar yes. hero loot. A couple, more more than a couple. Nice. Bard is Bard is actually a very powerful class. It is a very powerful class in D anD. Yeah. Hey, Eluk. Uh, unfortunately, we're, we miss we're, you. We we do. We're we we're two just minutes about, left. Two minutes left, though. That's it. Just hey, two. what? Oh. I know something we can do in two minutes. What's that? 
I can show you how I got the title of fastest sex speedrunner. <laughs> look, I knew look. It. I knew it was coming. I was waiting for it. It's great. Wizard, wizard can disintegrate people, but bard can insult people so thoroughly that they miss they their die. attacks. Also, that they die. Yeah, but I, he can I love disintegrate people. I can haunt them to death. The my my favorite. Um, I just love that this is a spell in D anD. d Tasha's hideous laughter is yep. amazing. That it's in a spell. It's so good. I I just love that you can completely incapacitate somebody by making them laugh so hard. It's well, it's great. As a reaction, mm. when an enemy makes an attack, as a bard, I can insult them to reduce their chance to hit you know their their attack and the insults are it. all voiced so when you react by the it. the insults are voiced mm. and the character will say uh i don't i don't even know what but like you fight random like a cow. insults how appropriate you fight like a dairy farmer <laughs> it's it's beautiful it's just i i love zelda I love Tears of the Kingdom. I think Tears of the Kingdom is a I think it's a 10 on 10 game. I think everyone should play it. I love it. Baldur's Gate might be better. Baldur's Gate is which is insane, I, frankly. I, it it is. And for me to say that is insane. I think Baldur's Gate might be better. I think it might be it's going to be a freaking war at the Game Awards. Like, <laughs> it's going to be crazy. What is I, poor Starfield of all the years to yeah. launch in? Like, that game, I mean, it's going to have to be spectacular, and I don't know if Bethesda is up to it. <laughs> I don't, I, I, I don't just think like to think that the Game Awards are going to descend to Nintendo and Larry and just going outside <laughs> for a punch up, <laughs> that not being not enough. Like, then they've got to have a death yeah. race or something, and it just escalates. I, 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 I honestly don't even think well, North End you say that, but Tears of the Kingdom is feature complete with no battle pass. Both of the both of the current game of the year contenders yep. have no microtransactions, no DLC, and no battle pass. Yep. Um, I love it. Yay for good games. I I, I think um, Baldur's Gate should win. Breath of the Wild already took a game of the year. Tears of the Kingdom yeah. is phenomenal. Larian deserves it. But Larian deserves this. I... I. And yeah, uh, Jake is right. There's a lot of feature complete games with no battle passes. There are also games with battle passes that aren't feature complete Diablo 4. But... Um, Diablo 4 is an awesome game, but yeah, it has issues. It's got issues. But... Um, there's... But there's no such thing as a game so... that's completely perfect in every way, is there? No, the, no. Gate yeah, I say Baldur's Gate three. <laughs> no, there's no, no, no. I knew it. I knew it. Portal. No. In seriousness, a game that is perfect in every single way. Portal one. No flaws. Ooh, it's not long enough. It's, it's the exact. Enough. No, it is exactly the length that it needed to, to be. It wasn't it long didn't enough. Over, was it didn't overstay its welcome. You missed one. an opportunity there, Eris. You should have said hot fuzz. <laughs> Sadly, I can't claim that it's a video game. Um, it's so never this one is... you to do it before. <laughs> so David and Shiver, I just got to add this because it because it was really funny, and we're just about to sign off. Um, you were talking about how you, how you can react and insult people in the in, in fights in BG three. I had this amazing moment that made me laugh my ass off earlier today. Um, the, the barbarian in my party said, you're not going to like this mate, and then went ran up and buried her axe in the guy's shoulder blades and killed him. <laughs> just wanted to ask him a question. <laughs> it was so good. Oh, man. It just is such a great moment. It, it, it's always nice when, when so much effort is put into voice lines. Yeah. It's definitely. That's the, it's, that's the one it's thing that's game. missing from Rogue Trader for me is it's just got wall of text, wall of text, mm -hmm. wall of text. I'm like, this is 2023. I didn't come here to read. 
everything you expect to be voiced <laughs> is voiced. Things like a book isn't voiced. You gotta actually read that. But everything yeah. else is voiced. And it's good voice acting, and it's throughout, and it's like... I'm going to talk to this cow. Oh, wait, this cow does. It, this cow doesn't even just have like one line of dialogue. This cow has. I hate that these tieflings keep throwing bits of jagged metal in my hay. What? I keep finding. Cow. I keep finding bits of jagged metal in my hay and it's hard to eat. I want to kill all of the teeth. Like it's it's it's. The cows eat hay. Yeah. I thought they ate grass. Same thing. Hay's just dried out grass. Same thing. Okay. Also, right. <laughs> also when you find out that one of the uh, cows is actually a druid, who's just yes. like hanging out there as a cow, being yeah. a cow, being a cow because he feels like it that day. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> hey, is for extreme vegans. Everyone, go watch that video with the four barbarians because you'll love it. Uh, in the meantime, we love you. Uh, long time. Thank you so much for watching us and hearing us. Audio sounds good. Oh, dear.